hello friends welcome back to my youtube channel i would like to thank you all for sending a lot of comments feedback and suggestions for the next videos in fact this video is one of the most requested features that is the amazon s3 service that's what i'm going to present the amazon's s3 uh, service or also known as simple storage service is one of the most widely used service within the AWS framework. S3 stands for simple storage service. It's a very secure, durable and scalable object storage uh, in which we can store flat files, movies, documents, Excel sheets or any other kind of a file. This storage service is purely based upon object storage. It's not a kind of a like a block storage or any other kind of a storage. S3 is a global service. So it means the name has to be unique globally. So it can't be like within a region, you can create one name and within another region, you can create another name, the same name, which we have created in the previous region. S3 is not a file system though it behaves like a file system. A lot of users would say, oh, it's a kind of a file system where we would create like buckets, which act as like a folders or anything. But technically, it's not a true file system deep down. It's based upon buckets and objects are stored in that. We'll see a demo for that. Uh, data is replicated in all the AZs, that is availability zones within the region for recovery purposes and maximum size of the file that you can load to the S3 uh, simple storage services, five terabyte. There are different use cases for S3 uh, simple storage services. Uh, the first use cases for the storage purposes, like we want to store some data or for any other purposes. The second one is like you want to store some kind of a backup for some time like with the data which you don't immediately need but you want it for as a backup purposes so that in case the system goes down you can just use that backup for restoration purposes and you can even store data for archiving archiving means the data which is needed for some kind of a compliance purposes or a legal purposes you need for a specified period uh, you are not actively using it but you still need some kind of a storage where you can park that data the another thing which S3 does very effectively is the integration with the AWS services. You can integrate S3 with AWS CloudTrail or AWS KMS or even like some kind of a AWS database service also so that initially the data can be loaded onto S3 and then we can pull the data from S3. Now it's the time to have a demo for the S3 service on the Amazon uh, AWS framework. Let's have that demo. So in order to use the Amazon's S3 service, uh, we firstly need to go into Amazon's AWS console. So for that, we can just use aws.amazon.com slash console. And uh, this would uh, give us uh, the uh, home page that would allow us to create a new account or uh, sign in with an existing account. Uh, I'm assuming that you you already know about how to sign in to an Amazon account. You have already created that account. So I'll just use it now sign in purposes. Uh, the sign in can be done with the root user or with the identity access management user, which you have, uh, though it's not a good practice to uh, use the root user because that should only be used for uh, uh, billing or some higher level purposes but otherwise you should have some kind of another user that should be used for day-to-day -day activities and uh, moreover uh, we should not uh, use the root user uh, without uh, MFA that is stands for multi-factor authentication uh, because this is only for the demo purposes so I'm just using my account for uh, logging without the MFA or even with the root user so I specify my account name that is the email address and then I have to specify the password so because I have not enabled MFA so you can see it is just allowing me to sign in without the MFA so once you sign in uh, you get into the uh, AWS uh, console 
uh, where you can find all your services and they are divided into different categories like compute blockchain or containers or storage or anything uh, if you are not aware how to like use uh, this aws console and you're not able to find anything you can just start searching for any service and then you can just click on that and you just go into that particular service so once we go into the s3 the first of the things which you can see is it is uh, presented globally because s3 does not require any region selection so it means the s3 service is a global service uh, so the name whatever you are going to create for a bucket uh, is going to be uh, globally unique it can't be duplicated so the first of the things what you need to do in order to store your data in s3 buckets is just to create a bucket and uh, creating a bucket is uh, just like uh, containing uh, sorry creating a container that can uh, store multiple objects into that so the first of the things what you need to give over here is it is the name of the bucket so if i say let's say my bucket and uh, this one is let's say the by default region is us east north virginia and i press next so because my bucket is a very common name so it just doesn't allow you and it says the bucket name already exists because it has to be unique globally so let's say i'll just proceed it with my initials and i say uh, bucket uh, learn one something like that and hopefully this bucket name is not taken up and i'm just going to keep the region same and uh, if you want uh, to have these settings being copied from some another bucket and if they, there is already another bucket which is there So you can technically use that bucket and all these settings from that bucket would be copied for you But because I don't have any bucket so you can see uh, I can't uh, really select that object uh, Once we give the bucket name you give the region we move on to the next so the next one is configure options where we can uh, give something regarding the versioning. Uh, versioning is one thing which uh, you can enable uh, right now while creating the bucket or even you can uh, enable it afterwards. So what happens in the versioning is, uh, let's say if we upload a file which is like a document file and if we upload the same file again, so it just starts creating the versioning of the same file so that if you uh, knowingly override or anything, you can always go back and revert back to the previous version. So you can even uh, keep this option on right now or if you want to keep the option afterwards, you can do this uh, versioning enabling on and off once you have created the bucket. So the another thing which uh, is about server access logging, so it means uh, whoever is accessing the S3 bucket or any kind of a file, the server is actually uh, logging all the access logs. Uh, if you want that kind of a stuff, you would create the server access log. Otherwise, you can just leave them empty. Uh, tags is just like to track your projects or anything so if you want uh, let's say some kind of a, for a billing purposes you want like okay uh, this was used in this particular project so you can use a key value pair uh, which just works uh, almost the same in different multiple cloud providers whether it is azure or s3 or gcp you want some object level logging we can also do that and default encryption uh, which is automatically encrypt objects when they are stored in the s3 so when you enable it so it is going to be like uh, asking you what kind of a setting you want you want an aes 256 or an aws key management services so the key management services uh, uh, probably maintained uh, by the amazon and it is a kind of a like a public key and a private key which both of the keys uh, the keys uh, are managed by amazon so if you don't want an encryption so probably you can uh, remove that uh, once i create like this looks good we go on to the next uh, the next is a kind of set permissions on that uh, on the bucket and uh, by default it blocks all the public access so if you see you can it, it blocks all the public access uh, these settings can also be uh, done once the uh, bucket is already created and then you want to uh, allow the access to some create some kind of an acls or not or public access or objects granted through a public bucket or access policies so we can do that so i'm just for the purpose of this demo we are just going to keep this uh, uh, the objects as a, a block all the public access and uh, manage system permissions 
uh, do not grant Amazon S3 log delivery group right access to this bucket. So if you want another service uh, which can technically use your bucket or use this S3 service, you can give that system permission or you can deny it. By default, it is denied. Or once the uh, Amaz this bucket is created, we can give some kind of a role management where we can allow one service uh, of an Amazon to actually talk to another service with the help of the roles uh, uh, workaround. So this looks all good. We are done with the permissions also, and we have uh, just gone with the default and we say next. So in the review section, it just uh, tells you what all you have selected. Uh, region name uh, then uh, permissions block all public access and then we just simply create a bucket by clicking this button so this bucket would be created and uh, because the access level was not set around so it says bucket and objects are not public and it is in the US, uh, US East North Virginia uh, give some kind of a date timestamp when it is created there's one bucket in that uh, so when we click on a bucket it just acts like a folder but technically it is not a folder it's just like some kind of an object which is a kind of a marker so that's there when you click on that so the bucket is right now empty uh, we can create some kind of a subfolders in this just like let's say we create a folder uh, it's our test folder uh, you want to use some kind of a encryption settings on this uh, let's say to keep this uh, thing simple we just say you know uh, 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 security for this we don't want any encryption for this and we save this so there is our test folder uh, within the bucket we created and now let's say we want to upload a file uh, so we can upload add or like uh, drop these files so let's say we add a file from a desktop and i say there is a demo file which i select open and it just uh, gives you the basic uh, uh, details about that file say next and uh, it just says the permission like which owner like the user in which i've logged in what kind of an access it has and access for other accounts you can give it or you want to give it a public access you can give that we just simply say next and uh, this is one of the uh, another key things for the storage class uh, the storage classes are primarily the categorizations of the s3 services uh, these are primarily divided into standard intelligent hearing standard infrequent access and one zone infrequent access and glacier or glacier deep archive and reduced redundancy so they are all uh, based upon uh, they give you some kind of a like uh, the uh, average charges how much charges would be applied uh, what kind of availability zones would be there uh, minimum storage you would have to like uh, duration use it for the purposes like to really qualify for that and uh, it all depends upon like uh, what kind of a data you are storing so for example you want uh, a data that is to be stored for the purposes of uh, um, backup uh, let's say uh, data archiving uh, which is only meant for legal purposes or compliance purposes so you can probably put that data into some kind of a glacier deep archive or glacier storage uh, so that because you are parking the data and you don't want to pay too much price on that so you are actually using the glacier or glacier deep archive depending upon how much data you store and how much time you would uh, uh, need to uh, consume that uh, the only thing uh, in these two cases are glacier or glacier deep archive is uh, the storage cost is very very minimal but once you actually need that data let's say after like five years you actually need that data it would need some kind of a like uh, number of hours for example it's like 15 or 20 hours that you would need to actually like retrieve your data ranging so if you can see the glacier has from minutes to hours retrieval times in 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 in, in hours only not in uh, like uh, for example uh, minutes so that's the only case what we have to remember but let's say if i'm storing it in a standard one so it means 
uh, I'm going to pay uh, more uh, storage cost as compared to the Glacier one. But of course, the storage service would be faster to access. The data would be faster to access. Uh, there is another one which is uh, like an intelligent hearing, uh, which Amazon's uh, AI does at a, a background and it checks around what kind of uh, uh, files you are frequently accessing it or not accessing it and automatically it uh, uh, puts it into different storage classes. So for the uh, demonstration purposes, we just put up into a standard storage class and we say next and it just simply says, okay, just review that, looks all good. And we simply say upload. So the data which we uploaded uh, was not into the test folder, rather into the bucket. So the bucket has now two things. One is a folder and one is a demo uh, file text. So if I click on that, so this is uh, some details about that particular file, uh, the owner, last modified, e tag, storage class, server side encryption size. And if you see the object URL, because it is an object based storage, so you can technically like copy that and go into a new tab and then paste it. So you can see uh, when I click on that, it's not exactly allowing me for that particular file because we have denied the access, all the public access to the files or to that particular bucket was blocked. So anybody who has even the link for that particular file uh, would uh, be getting this message that is the access denied. So if I just want to open it over here and uh, S3 storage service demo, yes, I can open up. I can't use this object URL. Uh, this object URL also helps in uh, uh, being used as a called as an object is called in the form of an API or HTTP request. Uh, you can even download uh, that uh, file as a different file and download it in a different format. Go on to the properties. And if you say you can't make it as public because the bucket doesn't really allow that. So you can't make any particular file as a public file. Uh, in the properties, you have different storage class, encryption you want to add, you want to add metadata, tags or object lock. Uh, permissions is like what kind of a permissions you want on uh, what kind of a stuff. So you can grant permissions for over here and uh, so you can even extract the records like there is a select from where you can have extraction of the records from csv or json formats uh, using sql expression so that's something like beyond the scope of this video so you can see um, this storage service is uh, one of the most widely used service uh, even if you go into the test folder so the test folder is empty. Now you can create subfolders or you can upload those, uh, upload uh, further files into that uh, folder. So though technically it looks like a file system, uh, but it is not exactly a file system deep down. This is just like which mimics as a file system to the end user because you just see the stuff into arranged into folders or files or anything. But they are technically objects accessible based upon kind of a HTTP or REST based calls. So that's why it's not a true file system. It's an object based storage. So I hope uh, you guys have uh, uh, might have enjoyed this video uh, and uh, it is a kind of a like a kickstart for all of you guys to start using Amazon's S3 uh, storage service. You can use it for different purposes. We have already uh, discussed the use cases. You can use it for storage, archiving, backups, for integration purposes or for any other thing. I hope uh, everyone uh, of you have uh, is going to like this video. Uh, and I'm going to come up with uh, more videos on AWS and Google uh, Cloud Platform uh, in the future times. Thank you. Have a nice day.